All right, ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though justice may not have eluded us just yet in this situation. If you guys remember, a couple days ago, I shared with you guys a road rage incident wherein a Filipino guy steps out of his car, an elderly gentleman, brandishes a firearm and smacks and brutally tries to, you know, hurt um, a cyclist which had run into the side of his car. Now, I'm starting to get a little bit more information and I kind of feel like I wanted to not necessarily leave it on a question mark, but to give you guys a little bit more information that I have come across. And again, anything that I'm talking about right now, I'm going to leave the articles where I found them linked in the description area below. All right. So first things first, this is a 63 year old gentleman by the name of Wilfredo Gonzalez. Right now, let's talk about not necessarily him, but the police that was handling the situation. The chief investigator has since resigned because there's outrage and backlash at the fact that Mr. Gonzalez was not arrested after brandishing the firearm. There was also some issue with him being allowed to hold a press conference and to make claims that him, um, Mr. Gonzalez, and the cyclist have settled their differences without the cyclist being there. There was a lot that was going on, ladies and gentlemen, and the chief of police, I think of Quezon City which was where the people who were handling this case, uh, I can't remember the name again. It's in the uh, article, article one at the top of the um, link in the description, but he has since resigned, right? And he made apologies and all of that stuff, right? Now I just want to get to the good shit. I just want to get to the good stuff, right? The juice. Um, Mr. Wilfredo Gonzalez, as we've talked about before, he was a police officer, right? And then I think he worked for the Supreme High Court at this time, right? But I do believe that he has since been let go from his job. That's number one. I believe, if I read correctly, that he is no longer in whatever position he was holding with the Supreme High Court. But back in the day, ladies and gentlemen, he is not one that is new to controversy, I should say. Because back in the day, in 2006... um. He was hit with some some serious allegations um, to the point where he's been demoted like a lot of different times. And I think they said that his rank upon retirement was that of a PO1, which most people would say is the absolute lowest rank you can be. But he has been on the force for, I want to say, close to two decades, almost 20 years, maybe 15, 20 years or so. But he was often getting in trouble. My young lady came across something um, that I could not find the article on. I don't know exactly where, but they did say that he was in trouble for taking bribes. Um, they did say that as a result of that, he was suspended multiple times. Um, you know, he was basically in trouble for gross misconduct throughout his entire duration as a police officer. So to an extent, with all due respect, when I say this, he does seem to be on paper, a disgraced officer. Since this particular situation, he no longer has a driver's license and they have revoked his gun license. I don't really think that that really is going to make a difference because yes, your license allows you to legally carry, but there are some people who don't necessarily care to go through the process of getting a license and they still carry their weapon. So I don't really know if that means anything, even if you you know, have a car, you can still drive. Um, you know, I'm sorry, even if you don't have a license, you can still drive the car and stuff, you know, so I don't really think that part's going to stop them. We don't know because this is somewhat of a high profile case and a lot of people are on top of it. I do not believe that he is going to be able to get away and or skate away with uh, any wrongdoing going forward, especially when all eyes are on him. I know that he's made a plea to people about, yo, Please leave my family out of this. I think the son went on social media and he was trying to defend what his father did. And I'm like, family, with all due respect, bro, if you weren't there, you can't really speak on it. Like if he wasn't in the car, like family, you just should stay, stay where you at, right? Because that's not your fight. You should just let your daddy fight that, right? I understand that people are probably coming at you and coming at your neck because of something your father did, but you can't really defend them if, you know, all somebody did was what brush up against the car and you get dad get out the car and brandish a firearm and start smacking on people. You know, you just can't do that no matter how angry you are. Right. But I think the father, like I said, Mr. Gonzalez is, you know, oh my God, you're putting my family in the spotlight. You're putting my family in this hard rock and I'm rocking a hard place and stuff. So, you know, please leave my family alone or I wish it wasn't so public. And he was asking a person that um 
recorded the video that I showed you guys, the video that I got um, to take down the video and stuff. I'm like, family, he could take it down, but let's keep it real. <laughs> that thing's done been shared so many times that me here in the great state of North Kakalaki in the United States of America was able to bear witness to the nonsense that you participated in. So uh, I do not believe that that person deleting it is going to stop it from spreading. But um, I do believe that justice has not eluded us yet. Um, we don't know exactly what's going to happen to, you know, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, the uh, disgraced officer, Mr. You know, pew, pew, <laughs> bang, bang, shoot him up. Um, we don't know necessarily what's going to happen to him. But what we do know is that social media, with all due respect, man, and let's keep it real. Social media has a way of forcing people to do things right when there's just a lot of outrage and a lot of backlash. We already seen the chief of police, like I said before, already resigned. The one that was over this case already resigned. Right. Gross mis not gross misconduct, but, you know, negligence, not arresting him and, you know, allowing the press conference and all of this stuff. It was, it's bad juju for him. So he's no longer part of this. And we don't necessarily know what's going to happen to Mr. Uh, Gonzalez, Mr. Wilfredo Gonzalez, 63 year old gentleman. Um, but what we do know is that social media seems to be carrying out its justice. Again, I'm not one to be a part of this social justice type shit or. Um, you know, get online and try to like, you know, tear people down or whatnot. But in certain situations, it's kind of like family. If you know you was wrong for what you did, but yet and still you try to defend what you did and, you know, you expect people to be in your corner and stuff like that when you know you did wrong, you know, that's kind of hard for me to stand by, especially when what it seems and what we saw, the cyclist really didn't do nothing to you, family. What did he do? Ride his little bike bike, and then you come over there acting a fool, and you want to, you know, brandish a firearm and all that stuff. It's like, damn, was that really necessary? Again, I talk about it from the perspective of, you know, being witness to road rage um, in many different situations. There was a situation down in South Carolina where a dude shot into the car. Nobody was hit, but he shot his, he shot into the car and has since got arrested, you know? So, you know, I often think about from the perspective of being a licensed carrier myself, you know, some people just crazy and some people don't need it, right? Some people just don't know how to control their tempers and their angers. And these are the people that don't need to be having certain types of weapons, you feel me? But, you know, thank God they took his license away, uh, gun license as well as uh, driver's license. But, you know, prayerfully... I would say I hope this man learned his lesson. I don't know. Um, genuinely, I just find the story to be interesting because, you know, it's amazing that it doesn't take much to, you know, fucking turn people up, right? It doesn't take much for people to get angry and then they feelings and ready to take a life because I brushed up against your car or something like that. I mean, let's be real, where a lot of people grow up in these bad neighborhoods, you know, you step on person's sneakers, that's often a death sentence as well. So I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, in the United States, certain things don't happen like that as well. But it's just the simple fact that people in society in general, short tempers. I don't know what's going on in my man's life. Could have been having a bad day. But this bad day is about to get 10 times worse because everybody, and I mean absolutely everybody, I can't find one person other than his family his familiar, that's on his side, right? Everybody is 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 not feeling that. And like I said, sometimes you got to learn, man. You're going to fuck around and find out. And I guess he fucked around and he found out that, you know, just because you were once a police officer and you did work for the Supreme High Court um, doesn't really give you the right to cut a fool and act a fool. And I kind of feel like that's something that's missing from the general consensus uh, when it comes to things that happen in, you know, parts of the world that may not always operate on the up and up. Um, you know, again, like I said, it can happen anywhere in the world. But, you know, I'm just kind of kind of satisfied at the simple fact that they not just go let this man get away with it. Right. Just let it slide. And had that video not come out, ladies and gentlemen, had that video we see not come out. Most of us would have never known about it. It would have been swept under the rug. And I think that that was probably what he thought. Because he definitely did not see my man with his camera out. And um, and can you imagine being the guy who filmed it? Like, you just happen to have your camera out. And you just, you must have seen something that happened prior that would have made you want to take your camera out and start filming, right? You didn't just magically just randomly have that shit out, right? So I'm curious to know what he saw prior to it. So maybe he can come through and explain a little bit more. Maybe there was some back and forth. Maybe, you know, they were going at it or the guy was driving reckless or something and he's seen it and he just wanted to record it. 
Come to find out this is what he ends up getting. And then he posted it straight to social media. Ain't nobody self, ain't nobody, myself included. Nobody's safe in these streets, man. I ain't gonna hold you. Nobody is safe. They going after everybody's neck. All right. But that's my time, effort, and energy, man. Appreciate y'all locking in. It's been a good talk. Y'all take care. Y'all stay blessed, family. Doc is out. Peace.